Truck buyers get screwed by Ram, Ford, and GM. What happened to the quality? Buyers are getting pissed. Addicted to easy money, Detroit stopped paying attention to passenger cars. This is easy to believe if you've driven a 2009 Dodge Caliber or a Chevy Cobalt. The big three have become addicted to easy money. They're allowed to pick from the pockets of the U.S. buyers with help from their government enablers. It's Americans who are being punished with higher taxes and prices. Pickups embody the American spirit, but the big three harbor a shameful secret. The industry is not as tough as the like a rock image that it projects. Behind the facade, the industry fears foreign competition. The big three have slacked off on developing innovative cars because they become addicted to the easy money offered by pickups. At 25%, the import tariff is virtually prohibitive. In 2001, fewer than 7,000 pickup trucks were imported from outside North America. That's only 0.23% of almost 3 million pickup trucks. Yes, would you believe the low quality vehicles from the big three, Ford, GM, and Ram, or Dodge, Stellantis if you will, are all a result of this free trade agreement. And what we have now is a scenario where there's almost virtually monopoly. As a matter of fact, the big three share a lot of the same labor pool, i.e. the UAW and the strike potentials that can happen, definitely as a driver, but those three brands all share the same labor pool and resources. And you've probably often wondered, where are all the import vehicles? Well, we can take this conversation back to 1962. Unfortunately, with the current setup that we have today, quality is lacking and cost is out of control. And that's simply because of a lack of competition. And American leadership has been quick to point out that the U.S. government only holds a 2.5% tariff on import vehicles, meaning that the free trade agreement is alive and well. Yet Europe has about a 10% tariff on their vehicle imports. And as it compared to China, where they were at 25%, have now reduced that to a 15% tariff on imports. And all is bolstered on this announcement of tariffs on $16 billion of China's products in August. Interestingly enough, one topic that is conveniently forgotten and the U.S. federal federal government is not quick to openly admit that there's actually been a 25% tariff applied to any import truck or two-seat SUV. And this has lasted for the least of the last 50 years. And on top of that, the big three have been getting ultra sloppy because the U.S. truck manufacturing has owned at least 50% of the market share since 1999 with the exception of a couple sloppy years back in 08 and 09 during the Great Recession. And certainly there's been some factors as to why the, the big three have really focused on pickup trucks. You'll notice Ford, GM, as well as Ram, Stellantis, Dodge, Chrysler generally don't focus too hard or they certainly don't focus on quality improvements, enhancements, innovation on any of their smaller scale vehicles. They know those vehicles are throwaway and a lot of consumers treat them that way. They really do focus on the manufacturing and production of their full size pickup trucks or medium size, if you will, pickup trucks like the F-150 50s, the Ram 1500s, as well as GM 1500s as well. So Americans in general love driving minivans, SUVs, and small pickup trucks. But particularly when gas is about a buck fifty to two twenty a gallon, are clearly some reasons why that these big three keep catering to building the medium and light duty trucks. But as well, I bet you didn't know that the big three are well protected by the federal government to the tune of about a twenty five percent duty or tariff on outside markets trying to bring their products into the United States. And let's contrast that with the fact that they can bring in small light duty cars and SUVs that have small profit margins, but they're only tariffed to about two point five percent. And remember, all other standard goods that are imported into the United States currently are around 1% tariff. And since some of the inputs that go into manufacturing some of these pickup trucks, subject to a whole different line of tariffs, to the tune of about 3.5%, the protection and subsidy equivalent of this policy has been absolutely magnanimous. So why, you ask, is this pertaining specifically to just pickup trucks? Well, clearly, this is an area where they can hit where it hurts. An accident of history that shows how hard it is for a government to withdraw favors even when they have no sound policy justification. This all comes back way back to the 60s. If any of you have been around at that time, we know back in 1962, there was a little issue with chicken imports. <laughs> Back in 1962, the European common market actually denied access for the U.S. chicken market and the associated producers. Of course, this absolutely decimated the U.S. market and farmers across the board and U.S. senators as well as politicians meant to play hardball. So as a response to this, retaliatory measures were taken by the U.S. government in 1964 to smack a 25% tax tariff on trucks that were generally aimed at the German Volkswagen combi bus that was ultra popular back in the 60s. Everybody's seen those. And they were enjoying an extreme success rate 
back here in the United States, particularly in Southern California, where it just seemed to be a big hit. This tax was then evolved to a place where virtually every pickup truck or utility vehicle from outside of the U.S. borders were applied that 25% tariff, and it just basically blew the competition out of the water. It essentially left the big three standing there, rubbing their palms together, thinking, this is virtually a monopoly. And so over with some time, the Germans finally gave up. We're done, Schweinhund, we're finished with that. But now it basically just applies to the Asian market. So now sadly, this quality issues that we speak of have literally been derived from this very tariff. The fact that there's zero competition coming from foreign markets mean that the big three from Detroit Ford, GM, as well as Ram or Dodge Stellantis have gotten lazy in their efforts and trying to bring customers in because they know people want that full-size truck, they're going to buy it. They don't have to innovate. They don't have to build better quality vehicles. And we're seeing door handles rip off of Chevys, Dodge with all kinds of oil consumption issues and knocking and lifter issues. We're seeing Chevy with bad transmissions and Ford leads the charge in recalls because they don't have their issues sorted out before that truck heads to market. Clearly, quality control was lost back Back in the 60s as we saw that deterioration occur over time once they started figuring out they didn't have any more competition or very little and they're all in cahoots anyway the big three in Detroit are all buddies from another mother so if Congress and the US government has to start asking the questions why are we not competitive why do not we build very better quality vehicles that are better and longer lasting for the consumer. Well, then they just have to look internally and start asking themselves, the last 47 years have we seen this decline in quality is directly attributed to the fact that the chickens have finally come home to roost. So a quote from the Washington Post back in 2013 goes something like this. The chicken tax has effectively insulated the US truck manufacturing from competition for five long decades. That's kept prices high and created huge profit margins for Chrysler, Ford, and General Motors. So much so, in fact, that some argue that the big three have slacked off in creating innovative cars because they've become far too addicted to the easy money made by pickup trucks. And Green Car Reports from 2009 is quoted as saying, profits from hundreds of thousands of Ford F-150s and Silverado Chevy pickup trucks have stayed disproportionately high because any truck built outside of North America had a 25% tariff slapped onto it versus the 2.5% for cars. Addicted to that easy money, Detroit basically stopped paying attention to passenger vehicles, which is easy to believe if you've ever driven a 2009 Dodge Caliber or a Chevy Cobalt. Neither of them remotely competitive with the best imports from Honda or Toyota. And clearly that trend continues today and there was a time when Honda and Toyota struggled, but once they started evolving, they figured out the rust factor and how to reduce oil consumption. They now have a staple in the market and clearly produce a much higher quality, more reliable, more robust vehicle than any of the big three could even dream of. So customers are just downright angry and some understand the history of this and others don't. But the reality is the only way to get this quality flushed out and get the big three to produce better, well, better made vehicles with great technology, great innovation, is essentially to consider removing that chicken tax that's been in place for over 50 years. That's about the only thing that you're going to do to continually force a lot of the big three to further innovate and make their products better and more reliable. Till that happens, that's not a chance in happening. There's too much money on the line. There's too much pressure and influence from the big three that the federal government will likely never pull that 25% tariff. And unfortunately in the US market, we're never ever going to see the high quality vehicles that you potentially have outside of the United States fence line. And with all of that said, you're gonna to wanna to check that out because that's all about why Jeep, Ram, Dodge, and Chrysler can't sell trucks and SUVs. And as a result, the production is stopping. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.